to complete NSE 7 Network Security Architect certification, you need to pass at least one of the following Fortinet NSE 7 exams. NSC7 underscore ADA minus 6.3 Fortinet NSC7 Advanced Analytics 6.3 NSC7 underscore ADA minus 5.2 Fortinet NSC7 Advanced Analytics 5.2 Retiring on May 31st, 2022 NSC7 underscore EFW minus 6.4 Fortinet NSC7 Enterprise Firewall 6.4 NSC7 underscore ATP minus 3.2 Fortinet NSC7 Advanced Threat Protection 3.2 NSC7 underscore PBC minus 6.4 Fortinet NSC7 Public Cloud Security 6.4 NSC7 underscore OTS minus 6.4 Fortinet NSC7 OT Security 6.4 NSC7 underscore SAC minus 6.4 Fortinet NSC7 Secure Access 6.4 NSC7 underscore SDW minus 6.4 Fortinet NSC7 SD1 6.4 NSC7 underscore FSR minus 6.4 Fortinet NSC7 40 SOAR 6.4 Design and Development Recently Fortinet NSC7 underscore EFW minus 6.4 dumps questions are updated by Dumpspace to ensure that you can pass Fortinet NSC7 Enterprise Firewall 6.4 certification exam successfully. Updated NSC7 underscore EFW minus 6.4 exam dumps with 115 practice exam questions and answers are the latest which could be your best resource for preparation. This video shares free NSE7 underscore EFW minus 6.4 free dumps as the demo to help you check the quality of Fortinet NSE7 Enterprise Firewall 6.4 exam dumps and experience the nice service of dump space. Question number one. Which statement about memory conserve mode is true? A. A FortiGate exits conserve mode when the configured memory use threshold reaches yellow. B. A FortiGate starts dropping all the new and old sessions when the configured memory use threshold reaches extreme. C. A FortiGate starts dropping new sessions when the configured memory use threshold reaches red. D. A FortiGate enters conserve mode when the configured memory use threshold reaches red. Answer. C. Question number two. What configuration changes can reduce the memory utilization in a FortiGate? Choose 2. A. Reduce the session time to live. B. Increase the TCP session timers. C. Increase the FortiGuard cache time to live. D. Reduce the maximum file size to inspect. Answer. A. D. Question number 3 The CLI command set intelligent mode controls the IPS engine's adaptive scanning behavior. Which of the following statements describes IPS adaptive scanning? A. Determines the optimal number of IPS engines required based on system load. B. Downloads signatures on demand from FDS based on scanning requirements. C. Determines when it is secure enough to stop scanning session traffic. D. 
choose a matching algorithm based on available memory and the type of inspection being performed. Answer. C. Question number four. Which two statements about the security fabric are true? Choose two. A. Only the root FortiGate collects network information and forwards it to Forti Analyzer. B. FortiGate uses Forti Telemetry Protocol to communicate with Forti Analyzer. C. All FortiGate devices in the security fabric must have bidirectional Forti Telemetry connectivity. D. Branch FortiGate devices must be configured first. Answer. B. C. Question number 5. Which of the following statements are correct regarding application layer test commands? Choose 2. A. They are used to filter real-time debugs. B. They display real-time application debugs. C. Some of them display statistics and configuration information about a feature or process. D. Some of them can be used to restart an application. Answer. C. D. Question number 6. What is the purpose of an internal segmentation firewall, ISFW? A. It inspects incoming traffic to protect services in the corporate DMZ. B. It is the first line of defense at the network perimeter. C. It splits the network into multiple security segments to minimize the impact of breaches. D. It is an all-in-one security appliance that is placed at remote sites to extend the enterprise network. Answer. C. Question number 7. Which two statements about 4D Manager is true when it is deployed as a local FDS? Choose 2. A. It caches available firmware updates for unmanaged devices. B. It can be configured as an update server, or a rating server, but not both. C. It supports rating requests from both managed and unmanaged devices. D. It provides VM license validation services. Answer. A. D. Question number 8. A FortiGates portal is connected to a private network. Its port 2 is connected to the Internet. Explicit web proxy is enabled in port 1 and only explicit web proxy users can access the Internet. Web cache is not enabled. An internal web proxy user is downloading a file from the Internet via HTTP. Which statements are true regarding the two entries in the FortiGate session table related with this traffic? Choose 2. A. Both session have the local flag on. B. The destination IP addresses of both sessions are IP addresses assigned to FortiGate's interfaces. C. One session has the proxy flag on, the other one does not. D. One of the sessions has the IP address of port 2 as the source IP address. Answer. A. D. Question number 9. What events are recorded in the crash logs of a FortiGate device? Choose 2. A. A process crash. B. 
Configuration changes. C. Changes in the status of any of the FortiGuard licenses. D. System entering to and leaving from the proxy conserve mode. Answer. A. D. Question number 10. Which of the following statements is true regarding a FortiGate configured as an explicit web proxy? A. FortiGate limits the number of simultaneous sessions per explicit web proxy user. This limit cannot be modified by the administrator. B. FortiGate limits the total number of simultaneous explicit web proxy users. C. FortiGate limits the number of simultaneous sessions per explicit web proxy user. The limit can be modified by the administrator. D. FortiGate limits the number of workstations that authenticate using the same web proxy user credentials. This limit cannot be modified by the administrator. Answer. B.